Talk about your nickname, uh, County Road 46. Yeah, that was a pretty pretty entertaining to hear. I think I think it started because before every game, I think it originally started with uh, Ryan Kelly. That's kind of a nickname I had given him was Interstate 70. And uh, I think Derek kind of played off of that, and uh, it was it was nice to hear him say those things. That was funny. Talk about your play on special teams, and uh, you make the most try to make the most of every opportunity. Yeah, no doubt. I uh, I love special teams, and I take a lot of pride in playing it. Um, I think to be you know a good special teams player, it's all about want to and effort, and that's something I really pride myself in, and I try to do a good job with that this year. How did your uh, playing days at Hoover? Yeah, playing at Hoover was uh, great. I had great coaches there. Coach Niblett, um, you know, not only makes you a great football player, but a, a great man too. And I learned a lot about toughness. I played defensive line at Hoover, and so I was in the trenches a lot. And uh, everything from Hoover, you know, helped prepare me for a big program like this at Alabama. I think. Having uh, having played a little D line in the past, when, when you see what this defensive line is accomplishing this season, uh, can you just talk about what it's like watching that close? Oh, uh, it's unbelievable. I uh, I grew up as an Alabama fan, and you know, since since I've been watching Alabama football, this, I, in my opinion, is the best defensive line I've ever seen. And um, you know, they're all great guys. They're all extremely competitive, not only on the field but with one another, and they make each other better. And uh, it's just really fun watching all those guys. Particularly working against them uh, in practice when, when you can go ten deep on, on that front four. I mean, that, that's got to get exhausting for the offense at times. I imagine. <laughs> Yeah, it's tough. They uh, each one of them, you know, they're carbon copies of each other, and they come in and they all play hard. And like I was saying, they're all really competitive with each other and make each other better. So it is tough going up against guys like that. Coach Saban, uh, when he talks about you, he, he smiles. Uh, probably not hard. Probably a hard thing to do to get the coach to smile. What, how does it make you feel? <laughs> yeah, it makes me feel great. You know. Uh, Looking up to a guy like Coach Saban and the man he is, and somebody that I kind of strive to be like, and hearing him say those type of things about you, it, it kind of warms your heart, and it, it's really awesome to hear those type of things from a guy like that. Talk about catching the touchdown pass this year and how, how that. Went. Yeah, a memory I'll always, uh, I'll always have. You know, catching, getting the opportunity to score a touchdown and and, and celebrate with your teammates like that afterwards, and Bryant Denny, and especially growing up as an Alabama fan, it's something I've always dreamed of and something I'll always remember. So what does this senior game mean to all of you in your class? Um, it means a lot. You know, uh, I was I was just talking to a friend a minute ago, and being here five years and senior night coming up, it makes us think back on memories we've made with each other, a couple championships, and uh, it's just it, it's a time I think that we can all reflect and and really think about what this university's done for all of us and everything. And what do you think this class's legacy will be left behind? Um, you know, I think I think we're just working hard each day, week by week, to just. We have a, a dominant, you know, sort of physical, tough team that nobody really wants to play, and I think we're still working to do that every week. At this point in the season, I mean, you, you guys have positioned yourself to, to make a run here, and having been on championship teams before, what, what's the message at this point in the season from the older guys to, to the rest of the team? Well, like I was saying a minute ago, really week by week, it's just we have kind of a motto that's 1-0, and, and and really what that means is just take each week, week by week, play by play, and win your area, win your box, and at the end of the day, you just want to be one and zero. That's all that matters week by week. Is it difficult, though, to kind of take that mindset into a game, especially when, you I mean, let's be honest here, I mean, you're playing a team from, from the FCS that isn't, isn't nearly what you're used to playing week in and week out. You know, I, I really don't think that here at Alabama that it's kind of instilled in you that, you know, every play matters, anybody can lose at any given moment, and it's important to win your box, win your play, and if you don't, then, you know, Good things don't happen, but if you do, good things happen. So we really are just focused, you know, play by play, week by week, being one and zero at the end of the week. I know you guys keep it focused in house on what you guys need to do each week, but you know, particularly going into a match with an FCS team, Harvard almost got beat by one earlier in the season. I mean, was that did the guys see that as sort of a wake up call for for this game that hey, you know, on any given Saturday? Um, you know, I don't know if they really took that uh, particular week, but just. Playing competitive football, and you know, all the, everybody's grown up playing football, and everybody knows that it's a competitive sport, and anybody can win at any time. So, all right, one more. Has it dawned on you that this will be the, the last game you play with Brian Denny? Hasn't really sunk in. I think uh, I think it'll be kind of a bittersweet thing thing when I leave the field um, Saturday night, and uh, it's going to be something that I'll hold close to me for a long time. Defensive line every day in practice. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 
from from your perspective, just how good is that support? Um, they they they're they're incredible. We have the something that I tell everybody is we I feel like we have the best defense in the country. And maybe I mean maybe I'm a little biased, but I feel like kind of the numbers speak for themselves also. And uh, I mean it's it's it's. This is a great practice for me going up against those guys, and uh, those, those those guys they're pretty good. You don't obviously have to play against them in games, but uh, you know, as an offensive lineman, particularly once you start getting into that fourth quarter, right. uh, if you're playing against a team that can keep bringing in fresh bodies every couple plays, just how tough is that to handle? I mean, yeah, that's that's extremely tough to handle. You know, as an offensive line, we we the, the same five linemen play every play. So if, if a team does have great depth and they're able to you know rotate. You know, multiple bodies and get the same the same type of production out of all of those bodies. It, it, um, I mean, it's it's tough to play against. I can remember the senior class that's moving on. Um, I, mean, I got a lot, a lot of great memories, but I mean, as far as on the field wise, I'm, I'm or in the locker room wise, they're great leaders, um, great guys on and out the field. You know, um, I, I just the, I like the way like like how, like how. Co- cohesive we are as a unit. Those guys, you know, are, are exceptional leaders and um, I think that's something they pride themselves in. Uh, there, there was a lot made about uh, Derrick Henry's breakaway speed right. after the last game. When you guys are blogging for him, do you, do you guys know that if you give him, you know, for, for lack of a better phrase, if you give him an inch, he's going to take a mile when it comes to, to getting, uh, getting a seat for him? Right, definitely. Um, I think well, some, something that I, I get asked a lot is, am I surprised when he runs away from DBs? I just know I'm not, because I see it every day in practice. And, um, I know the type of speed he has, especially to be his size. I, mean, I, I know he's, he's, he's an extremely fast guy. So we as an offensive line know that if we give him, if we give him any type of space and he's able to get to the second level, there's a good chance that he's gone. I know how close you guys are as teammates, everybody in that locker room. We hear guys talk about it every week. So going off of that, when you see a guy like Kenyon Drake, have another injury right. like he had. Uh, how, how how tough is that to see, especially knowing what he did to try to come back from the last series injury? Here? Um, that's extremely tough to you know see Drake go down with an injury because um, I mean just that's one of our brothers. Just, it doesn't have anything to do with football. You you don't want to see you don't want to see one of your brothers go down with an injury. But um, especially knowing what he's already been through is is extremely tough. But me knowing the type of guy he is, I know he'll he'll work hard and he'll bounce back from this injury the same way he bounced back from the last one. There aren't a lot of teams where you see a guy like Kenyon playing on special teams. Is that just a testament to how dedicated the guys on this team are, that they're they're willing to play wherever to get on the field? Right. I mean, I, I think that, you know, some, I think it just comes down to, you know, knowing if our guys have egos, you know, they, they, don't mind, they don't mind playing special teams or, or whatever their role is on the team. They're just trying to, you know, perfect, perfect their role and, um, you know, do that to the best of their ability. How important is it to get these younger backs some, um, you know, some good holes to try to get some experience the last few games uh, to work them into rotation. Um, I, th- I think it's pretty important. You know, we want to we want to let those guys, you know, get out there, and, um, you know, run around run around a little bit also, so that so that they're able to get used to how Saturdays are and that they're able to get used to you know um, the way the way the games are played on Saturdays. Thanks, Cam. sheer number of sacks that the defense has had this season. With the emergence of you guys in the secondary, do you feel like your coverage back there has maybe helped in, in some regard, maybe given the, the defensive line an extra half step sometimes or half second to get to the QB? Possibly. I mean, D-line and secondary works hand in hand. I mean, we were allowing them to get pressure, and we, we do our job in covering, so it works hand in hand. Again, Again, just how, how uh, gratifying was it to find the end zone on the punt return, and then uh, how important is that down the stretch to be able to you know, score points on, on special teams like that? Uh, it felt good to finally get in the end zone. I mean, been trying to get in there all season, so it was good to get one in a big game. But uh, like you said, it's going to be a critical part for us going down the stretch and uh, just being effective in all three phases of the game. I know you have a, you got a long way to go, but how are you going to remember this senior class, well, how are you going to look back on it? Hopefully as national champions. That's pretty much it. I mean, it was great to be a part of this this year so far. And like you said, we got a long way to go, a lot more games to play. So well, hopefully we can finish it out strong and uh, get the result we want. Going up against uh, kind of a beer option attack as a defensive back, 
what becomes important for you more going up in the run game than, than being back and defending the passes? I mean, the secondary, you just got to have your eyes in the right place at all times. With a team that likes to do the option and have run pass options out every play they run. So you just got to be disciplined and do your job, not try to do anything spectacular. Just be sound in your technique and, and play your responsibilities. Is that more difficult to prepare for an attack like that? I don't think it's more difficult. You just got to focus on the details more and just have your eyes in the right place, like I said. At this point, do you guys feel you have the best defense in the country? Or? I mean, we just, I mean, we're confident in our abilities to, to decide whether we're the best in the country is not really our job, but I mean, we know what we can do when we step on the field as long as everybody's communicating. We know what type of talent we got every, at every position on the field. So, I mean, we just try to go out and play to our standard every time we're on the field. It's up to you guys and the so-called experts to decide who the best defense in the country is. You guys won, obviously, a ton of games during your career. But you haven't, I mean, is, is it experience that allows you to maybe have a little bit more fun this year? Are you having a little bit more fun this year? Definitely. I mean, this year has been one of the fun, one of the most fun years since I've been here, just being an older guy, not really having, you know, think about what I'm doing, worry about messing up or my responsibilities on each play. It's just going out there and playing free, just enjoying being out there for the last year and uh, playing with my brothers and just enjoying this time and not taking it for granted. So it's definitely been a really fun year. How much yes. are you going uh, to miss Bryant Dennis Stadium? I'm going to miss it a lot, man. It's bittersweet. That's my last game coming up. Uh, but I've had some great times here, and uh, I've grown a lot as a player and as a person. So. I'm always going to remember it and uh, just cherish the kind of relationships that I've built here over the past four years. So it's going to be bittersweet.